Hi, I'm Alan Kent, and today I have with me Stefan Gassar, and we're going to be talking about image optimization, uh, particularly image optimization for e commerce websites. Uh, Stefan, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Hello, my name is Stefan. I'm a technical expert for web performance at Google. And what I basically do all the day is I try to help developers to build fast websites and identify performance issues. And I also support them uh, with the use of modern web technologies. Well, welcome to the show. Um, as an e-commerce site owner, why would I care about image optimization? Yeah, as you may already know, site speed is impacting the conversion rate directly. The slower your, light, uh, your website is loading, the higher is the bounce rate you will experience with your users. Also, the users on your page are comparing your website to your competitors and also to the best experiences they have on the web. They expect the same fast experience they have somewhere else also on your website. And with images, they are generally the largest part of the payload you have on your website. Uh, if you look at HTTP archive data, you will see that about 50% of a medium page load is images, which is quite a lot. And images are also increasing year over year uh, on the median website, if you look at the statistics. And this especially affects mobile devices with limited connectivity uh, and also limits on hardware like CPU and memory, which are available. So the first logical step, actually, if you want to optimize your website, is to optimize on images. So how can I know that I've got a problem on my site with images? Well, you can uh, do some auditing on your website. There's a lot of tools you can use for auditing. Uh, one tool which is right built into the Chrome DevTools is Lighthouse. Lighthouse is checking for a bunch of problems, also has several audits built in for images directly. For example, um, images that are off the screen are audited and also the size and compression of images. It provides directly recommendations you can apply to fix these issues. And it also shows the impact, the estimated impact these optimizations will have on your load time. Another option you can go for is to run a web page test report. Web page test is a free tool you can use to analyze your page. You can use the waterfall view, which is built into this report to see in which order requests are actually loaded on your page. And it also helps you to visualize um, if images are actually blocking your critical resources in the process. Um, another thing you can see there in the content breakdown section is how, how much images you are loading actually, actually on your page. So how big is the part of images? And that also helps to ident identify um, if you have pages that are loading too many images in comparison to other resources. You can also use other audit tools than these two. Um, basically, uh, it doesn't matter which tools you are using as long as you have access to these numbers. So once I've determined I've got a problem on my site with uh, images, what do I do next to try and optimize them? Well, at first, you could, of course, start with the recommendations you get from Lighthouse. But before that, maybe it's better to set the basics and uh, apply other bas uh, basic performance best practices um, in general for your website. Um, at first, you could start by identifying which pages have the most images on your website. This could be, for example, the home page with a lot, a lot of hero images and teasers, um, or search result pages which show a lot of product images, or product pages themselves um, also showing product images. So another approach to go there is you could look at which pages your visitors are landing on first when they enter your website. This is also a good point to start uh, looking for for opportunities to op uh, optimize the the whole user journey. And also, you should consider landing pages, uh, special landing pages that are advertised in your campaigns. So at first, uh, if you have identified these pages, uh, I would recommend to start by reducing the overall amount of images which are loaded on these pages. So do a clean checkup um, if all the images are actually needed. Uh, one thing you can look at is layout images. A lot of effects which were done with images in the past can be achieved today with pure CSS. Um, and as a next step, also, um, you should check the cache expiry time for your resources. 
Um, a lot of images are not cached for that long time, so um, they are not available on repeat views if users are coming back to your page. So we want to make sure that these uh, cache expiry times are as high as possible, like a few months or even a year. This also takes load from your servers and uh, reduces the overall traffic on your page, which is a win-win situation for both you and your users. Images can change, so you want to make sure that these images are updated. Um, there are some cache control headers you can add. Um, you can add uh, e-tag and the last modified headers, which also indicate when images have been changed. And this also, this in general helps then browsers to decide when they have to check on the server side if there's a newer version for an image. As an alternative, uh, as a last option, you can um, also apply your own versioning, like uh, changing the file name after you applied an update. And uh, together with this mechanism, set a really long cache time, like for a year. Some platforms take the approach of hashing the contents of an image and using the hash as part of the URL. That way, if during a deployment, a image changes, you'll get a new URL. And if it hasn't changed, you'll get the same URL. OK, so after addressing the, the basics, uh, images in the stop section of, say, the home page can still take a bit of time to load. Is there anything I can do about that? Yes, what you can do here is um, you can check in, in which order images are loaded. As you might already derive from that, not all the images on the page are equally important. The most important images from a user's perspective are at the top of the page because these are the ones um, the user sees first, and you want these loaded at first also. An example, maybe on the home page, you have a large hero image or teaser, or even a slider component, and the images which are included in there are the first ones which are seen by users. This top section is also called above the fold content, and this above the fold content is um, similar to a newspaper, the first thing a uh, user is seeing. So the order in which the browser is loading these resources um, could be different, and it's not prioritizing by default on the images which are at the top of the page. What you can do, fortunately, is you can prioritize certain resources to be loaded earlier by doing um, preloading or resource hints uh, in, in, in your head section of the page. It's called the preload statement, and it's basically um, a one-liner code which adds um, the hint to the browser that a certain resource should be loaded in a in priority. So what you can do um, in example for the home page, you could add a preload statement for the hero teaser. So this one is loaded first. And I would also recommend to add um, preload statement for other critical resources at the same time, like CSS, which is needed to render um, the top section of the page. You should also avoid to preload too much, since if you add priority for everything, nothing is priority anymore. So this is the option if you um, actually have the, uh, the option to, to change the code. If you don't, but you can also add um, additional headers on the server side, there's an option to add preload headers to the request for the document itself, which is um, the server side solution for that and has the same effect. Um, in terms of optimizing for the above the fold content, you can also consider to change out the logo and icons which you are using with SVGs, because SVG format has has the great uh, the great um, capability to be implemented uh, embedded directly into the HTML content, which even saves more requests uh, for images. Hmm. I've seen some sites use SVG very effectively because you can scale the image without pixelization. Well, that's all for this session. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave a comment on this uh, post. Um, but we've got more coming up in a part two, coming up soon on this channel. Take care.